introduction. Um, we are presenting today, looking into paradise, exploring PV school signature programs. Hopefully you've heard about a lot of our signature programs. Um, if you haven't, you're going to be in for a treat today to hear about all of the wonderful programs we have. Um, sometimes people think you have to go outside the district to get some specialized programming, but you will be wowed when you hear all the different programs that we have right here in the district that are open to all of us who are currently here at the schools. So they go all the way from pre-K through high school. Um, and Dr. Corson, who's our assistant superintendent of curriculum is gonna present our various presenters who are here today. They're gonna to give you just a touch of information about each one because there's too much to cover all in this one format. But we wanna give you an introduction especially because some of them have deadlines for application that are coming up. Um, and we will try to follow up with you and send out some information that uh, lists all these programs and gives you tips on how to follow up to find more information if there's any you're interested in. And also directing you back to our YouTube page, some of these programs we've already done specific presentations on, and you can go and hear the full presentation anytime at your pleasure uh, right there on our YouTube page. So. Um, Melissa, do you have anything to add before we bring on Dr. Corson? The, the only thing I would add is uh, Dr. Corson, if, if I have not made as someone a co-host, please just, if you are supposed to be a speaker, please put a note in the chat and I'll go through and make sure you are co-hosting so you can unmute yourself when it's your turn. Uh, and like Julie said, we actually have a program to follow up with this next Monday evening or afternoon, I think at five o'clock on the career and technical education. So hopefully that person will, will share that as well when she gets on. So thank you, Dr. Corson. I'm looking forward to hear more about these programs. Well, great. Well, thank you so much, uh, Julie and Melissa. I really appreciate the introduction and we appreciate the opportunity to be here this afternoon to share with you, uh, as Julie said, a glimpse of our programming. You know, I really do think that uh, part of the point of pride for our district is really the unique and quality programs that we offer uh, students uh, K-12. And I really do think that they are unmatched when you compare the quality of the programs that we offer versus any other district. And so we're really proud of the work that we do uh, in developing these programs. And, and we're excited to have many of our directors here uh, this afternoon, along with some of the coordinators of these programs to share with you in very brief form, some of the highlights of these programs. And certainly if you've got further questions about these programs, we would encourage you to reach out to these individual departments to ask some specific questions. We'll also take some questions in the chat uh, box and we'll try to address them as we go. And hopefully we'll have a little bit of time at the end if there are some additional questions that we want to ask about these programs. So we're going to go ahead and, and get started. I'm going to um, uh, share my screen here and start with uh, our gifted program, what I, which I know that you've heard in, in some other presentations, but it's really important to uh, highlight some of the gifted work that we have going on in the district. And so as a reminder to our presenters, I'll go ahead and operate uh, the PowerPoint slides. And so you just let me know when you're ready to advance. But we're gonna go ahead and start with uh, Dr. Bruez to talk a little bit about gifted. Is the presentation started? Yes, we're ready for you. Uh, oh, okay, because I don't see the slides yet. Let's see. Are you seeing the slides? You are not. Is anybody else seeing them? Yes, I can see the slides. Um, can you just go to present mode? Yeah, give me just one second. Dr. Breers, you're not, see are you just seeing, um, hmm. are you seeing the, presenters themselves and not the main screen. I'm seeing a black if you just press, there you go. Okay. Now, can you see them? Nope. Let me see. Uh, well, I can just talk to them, but no, I don't see a presentation put uh, posted. So I'll just talk to him. How's that? 
Yeah, so Dina, yeah, the first slide is uh, talking about Journey, the DLC, uh, okay. the Academies and Languages at Desert Shadows. So basically, these are um, our signature programs, or these are just the middle school programs because our other programs that uh, get to programs are not considered signature. So these are the, the, the middle school ones. Now, um, I've listed three for the middle schools, and the um, the the Desert Shadows uh, Honors Academies, those are actually, parents can uh, register and apply through Desert Shadows. That one is the, is the one that doesn't go through my office. So for more information on that program, I would ask that you go to Desert, Desert Schools Middle School, uh, Desert Shadows Middle School website and look for their academies, Honors Academies of Foreign Language and of Pre-Engineering. And um, the two other pro signature programs that do go through my department, um, the application uh, process, the staffing, the whole program design, are our, our two uh, specialty programs called the DLC, the Digital Learning Center, and that's housed at, housed at uh, Sunrise Middle School. That has been in um, ongoing for, I think, 10 years now, um, or around there. And it's a very uh, exciting program. It's for highly gifted students. Many of these kids will have gone through the self-contained gifted program, but not all. Uh, kids are, are accepted into the program if they meet that criteria. And that criteria is on our gifted website uh, along with the application. And basically, it is a th it's a project-based, it's thematic th integrated program where students work with projects to explore areas in depth of their interest and in the areas uh, along with the, how the integrated curriculum, how that's de it's designed. The kid is, we call it semi self-contained because the core, all the, the, the only thing is outside of the, of the DLC for uh, these students is their math class and their uh, electives. Everything else is integrated throughout the day with a team of amazing teachers. Um, so go onto the website, you'll see that. And um, Melissa and I have a presentation posted on the UBC uh, links so that you can see a full blown uh, presentation of that and um, get, really get a good idea of it through that. It's an hour long presentation. And then the other one is new this year, uh, Journey. And that is a, a uh, blend learning type of a program where it is also very student centered and it's, it's where students can build on their strengths and interests, but it's very similar to the DLC in that it is project-based learning, but it's a little different in that it is personalized learning. So that we really build on students' ideas, strengths, um, areas of interest and integrate that into the, the, the projects, the units that the teachers have created. Once again, we have a teacher team there that they uh, work to, very closely together to make sure that these, that all of the, uh, the, the programs, all of the units are integrated uh, within their, their content. And then the students in that, in that uh, uh, program also will take electives in math outside of the, of, of the journey program. Once again, with the journey program like the DLC, those applications are online on our gifted website and similar uh, criteria for entrance into both of those programs. We have had amazing success for, the, for with those programs, especially for those kids for whom the, the honors class or the regular honors program isn't quite challenging enough. So um, if you think your child fits into that one of those categories, please uh, visit our website for more information and, uh, and take a look at the uh, videos because Melissa has posted those to the U site for the journey as well. And these were both just recently posted this fall. So they're very much updated. You'll get to see the teachers, the classroom, and some of the student um, projects that they work on through that. Those are our, our signature programs for middle school. I know later on you'll be hearing about some of the signature programs for the high school. And many of our, our gifted students who go through our self-contained programs or our other gifted programs will go into those. And so I don't wanna exclude those other programs, but I just know other people are gonna be highlighting them, but I wanna let you know the IB program, the CREST program, DAPS, Digital Academy for AP Scholars, those are all high, high school uh, programs that is on the trajectory of where a lot of our uh, gifted students who have been with us from elementary through middle will end up. And also those uh, applications into those programs 
are on the high school sites, not, not through mine, but you can get more information on the Gifted website. We have an amazing staff who is eager to talk to you. So if you've got any questions about these, after looking at the website, after looking at some of those videos, please feel free to uh, give us a call. And we'd be happy to direct you to some more information from the teachers, the schools, or our department. Great, thank you very much, Dr. Ruiz. Up next is our director of uh, CTE, which is Becky McGowan to talk about our career and technical education program. Great, so good afternoon, everyone. Uh, often I am asked, what is career and technical education? My short answer is CTE is the how and the why of the what. CTE programs are not just a coherent sequence of courses, but a unique delivery model that incorporates academic knowledge, powerful technical and professional skills, along with leadership development. Our programs provide students with a competitive advantage. What does competitive advantage mean? When asked, my 19-year-old son answered within the context of cross-country running. Knowledge of the course prior training and conditioning. My husband responded in his basketball coaching context. Preparation. Failing to prepare is preparing to fail. According to best-selling author Mark Perna, the intersection of robust academic knowledge and powerful technical and professional skills is the single most important competitive advantage we can provide our students. This will be even more important as we reach the other side of this global pandemic. The skills that are developed in CTE programs today will transfer to those unimagined careers of tomorrow. The students in our classes now are Generation Z. To these students, the question, what kind of lifestyle do you want? Resonates more than, hey, what is your career goal? They are part of the why generation. They want to know why. For this generation, relationships matter. For this generation, experience is everything. This is great for CTE because we have so many experiences to offer students, from hands-on learning in our program's labs to the vast array of experiences provided by our active participation in our program's CTSOs, Career and Technical Student Organizations. The competitive advantage of career-minded education is not just for students who have other post-secondary options in mind, like immediate employment, tech or trade school, or the military. Even students focused on going directly to college after high school can benefit tremendously by completing a career-focused program in high school. Those whose program aligns with their college plans will have a head start on their coursework and will be more at ease with their decision. They also will have hands-on experience and networking possibilities that may elude their peers. The competitive advantage is evident. And even if the college-bound student's high school career program is not in their future career field of choice or not even a career developed yet, they will have gained lifelong marketable skills that will enable them to earn an above average wage during their college years and help to fund their future. How does this affect the bank of mom and dad? It is not college or career. It is college and career. What happens after college? Do students return home to live with mom and dad the rest of their lives? Let's hope not. The light at the end of the college tunnel is some type of meaningful and gainful work. In other words, a career, right? Now, let's talk about passion. Passion is a critical ingredient to any project or goal. Passion gives us the energy, drive, determination, and resilience to get through the rough parts. Find a job you love and you'll never work a day in your life. But passion is not something that you can instill in anyone or teach anyone. It comes from within a person. We don't know what our students' passion is and they do not know what is available. Discovering the passion of the students we have in our classes will depend on the experiences provided. To them, experience is everything. 
When we give tours of our CTE programs to parents, prospective students, and our advisory partners, even fellow staff members, the most common remark is, I had no idea that these programs were offered. This is not a good thing. Students are missing out on opportunities that they have no idea exist and are losing a chance to experience something that may provide them the passion to make it to the other side of high school. We cannot instill passion in anyone. It comes from within. CTE serves as a spark plug to the engine of student interest. So as was alluded earlier, an in-depth look at the 22 programs available in the district, as well as West Mech program offerings, will take virtually this coming Monday on November 23rd from 5 to 6.30 p.m. And please see the UPC website for more information, or perhaps somebody could put a link in the chat. So I hope to um, see a lot of you there or have a lot of you there for a more in-depth look at the wonderful opportunities that CTE um, provides our students. Thanks so much, Becky. Appreciate the information. Well, one of the other programs that we have as well at our um, uh, K-12 is AVID. And Melissa Ganes, who you know, works at the district level to provide wow. guidance to our schools, is up next to talk a little bit about AVID. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for having me. As Dr. Corson said, um, my name is Melissa Ganes, and I am the AVID district coordinator um, this year for PVUSD. And I wanted to take some time to talk a little bit about AVID. And like Dr. Corson mentioned, it is a K through 12 program and a system. So what is AVID? AVID stands for Advancement via Individual Determination, and it is a K through 12 college and career readiness system and program that our sites implement in order to support the success and opportunities for all of our students. That's a real big point for AVID is all of our students are supported. So let's take a minute to um, look at the AVID elementary level. So what does AVID Elementary look like? It is actually a system at the elementary level. So all students are participating in this and we have some five main components here of AVID. So the development of academic habits and this is age appropriate to students kindergarten through sixth grade. And what does that mean? Well, our students are learning how to organize their thinking. They're learning how to critically read. They're learning how to ask higher level questions. They're learning how to collaborate and have academic discussions. Um, they're also learning about college and career all through the campus. So in their classrooms, teachers are talking about college and what they need to be successful in college. They're learning about careers and what they could do um, as they move up through their educational career. Part of AVID is also a growth mindset. So you can see some of our photos here. Our students are learning the difference between a fixed mindset, which can be detrimental to success and growth, um, as opposed to a growth mindset, which really supports students in the opening their minds and expanding themselves to take in opportunities. What this does is it creates a rigorous classroom environment for our students because they're really challenging themselves to dive deeper into their content, but they're also surrounded by a positive and supportive culture not only in the classrooms and the schools. So AVID really does support every other program and initiative that could be on a campus. We're gonna switch over to secondary. Let's see if I have access. All of these pictures are in our AVID elementary classrooms here in the district. And I do want to make note that at the bottom, um, AVID has 100% support for digital teaching and learning. So all of our sites have access to digital teaching tools, strategies for both students, parents, and educators. And it's open to everybody who would like to take the time to take a look at it. So our sites are fully supported. All right, great. Do Thank you, you so much, Melissa. I do need the next slide. Uh, let me Sorry. see. 
There we go. Thank you so much. So this is taking a peek at AVID secondary. It looks a little bit different at our secondary level. And I do want to point out the mission at the top. And it, um, AVID's mission is to close the opportunity gap by preparing all of our students for college and career readiness in a global society. So that is huge. Um, at the middle school and high school level, students have the opportunity to apply for, interview for, and be accepted into the AVID elective class. And that is a class that they take um, in their schedule. And every single AVID student takes honors, APIB, MYP, dual enrollment coursework. Um, they're supported with organizational and time management strategies, critical thinking. They receive assistance with college applications, scholarship applications, FAFSA, and really dive into leadership skills and community service. They also engage what we call tutorials two days a week, which are built off of college study groups and also collaborative group projects in a career setting. So students learn how to work together to solve problems and also create solutions. The benefit of AVID at the secondary level is that it spreads school wide. So teachers are using best practices in their classrooms. They're teaching students how to take focus notes, ask questions, collaborate, communicate. And again, they have access to all of those digital tools. So we have one more slide, two more. Thank you so much. So why AVID? Um, AVID supports all aspects of social emotional learning as well as academic learning. So it's more of a personal and academic um, system. It creates high expectations in our classroom, teaches our students all of the tools they need so that by the time they graduate, they can be successful. Um, when we look at students in terms of college persistence who graduate through an AVID program, um, the national average for persistence in college from freshman to sophomore year is about 77%. And for AVID students, it's between 83 and 86%. And that information is taken from the National Clearinghouse um, and AVID data collection and also college student collections. So really what we're looking at are rigorous classrooms, um, a sense of urgency in the learning environment, and of course, the support of all students on a campus. There is a video here that you can go ahead and take a look at um, later on because I know we're running short on time, but my last slide here does show where all of our sites are that have AVID. We have five elementary schools and we have five secondary schools and I've provided all of the contact information for all of our sites. We are currently recruiting and accepting applications. Um, we do have some online applications, but all of these teachers are easily accessible. So please feel free to reach out to them. I also have my information down at the bottom. Please feel free to reach out to me about more information, um, applications, any questions you may have. I know this is a very quick snapshot of AVID. I do wanna give a very quick shout out to Vista Verde and North Canyon uh, High School. They're actually AVID National Demonstration Schools, which means they're in the top 1% of AVID schools in the entire world. And that means that they are amazing at their implementation of AVID and the data that shows the success for their students. So just wanted to give a little shout out there to, to my sites. So thank you so much. Um, again, this was a very brief snapshot, so please feel free to ask me questions at any point. We are updating the district website. Um, that will be revamped and updated by January 1st, so I encourage you to take a look at that at two in next semester. Thank you, Dr. Corson and everybody. Thanks, Melissa. Appreciate the information about AVID, uh, a fantastic program in our schools that really support uh, a lot of students. Uh, moving on to college and uh, career. So uh, in addition to that program, we also have core knowledge embedded in uh, many of our schools. And here to talk about core knowledge is one of our principals, Ryan Schoonover. Ryan? Yeah. Hi there. Thank you, Dr. Corson. So I, I'm Ryan Schoonover, the principal at Wildfire Elementary School, and um, my school is one of many in the district that um, utilizes the core knowledge uh, program and curriculum here. So um, going through, I um, want to uh, go over that it's more of just a complement to the standards that we have. It doesn't replace the state standards or the curriculum that we use here um, in the state of Arizona or in Paradise Valley, but um, looking at that, if, if you look at the standards, the standards provide basically just general guidelines about what the students should know and be able to do. 
and it offer they offer um, very little guidance for teachers or um, details um, about specific content or skills that students are needing to know by the end of it, um, by the end of what they're learning. And what uh, Core Knowledge does is it offers a coherent uh, content specific foundation for all students. Um, and it's the, the learning builds from grade to grade. So it's sequenced out and what this does, it helps um, remove some of the repetitiveness that um, that, that can happen from grade level to grade level and also um, remove some of the ambiguity from the standards and really shows teachers what they need to be teaching and what students need to be uh, learning. So, um, and, and, and the idea behind this is that it gives a, the, a guaranteed equal access of knowledge to all students and how it builds. Um, one of the easiest ways to think about this is that you want to um, teach students how to multiply before you teach them addition. And this is the same thing. We have a lot of students that go through um, not having the needed background knowledge to access new knowledge or skills. And so core knowledge, um, it really outlines and details what these students should know. Um, and then so it, it helps them um, prepare and then um, gives them equal access and guarantee to the knowledge that they need to um, be successful. Um, let me point out for an example of the um, how vague some of the standards can be. So for a second grade example, I look I, I took a history standard that um, that they would use in second grade, and it, it tells us to examine developments from the civilizations and or cultures of a place and region um, or, or place or region. So our district um, GVC and maps go a little bit further and tells to describe, the lifestyle and culture of ancient um, civilizations and explain how their environment affected the lives and uh, of the people in the ancient civilizations and describe their government, religion, and economics. But it doesn't necessarily tell us which ancient civilization um, and the things that we need to know from them. And so what core knowledge does, it gives details to teachers about what they're needing to do. So if you look at the core knowledge sequence for second grade, ancient civilizations, it starts off with and tells that students needed to be learning about early Asian civilizations in India and going specifically about the rivers, um, Hinduism and Buddhism, um, specifics about those um, and moving into China, um, Confucius and the Great Wall, the invention of paper and really getting into detail about what students need to be able to know. And then it also moves into ancient Greece and the study of Spartan, Sparta and Athens and democracy um, the Olympic Games and so on and so on. Um, and then it builds up to the other grade levels. And what's great about this and what my uh, our students really enjoy and our teachers enjoy is that it, it's not specific to just uh, social studies. It also uh, incorporates a variety of other subject areas um, such as uh, that songs and things that they that go along with their units of studies they use in um, music and art and um, incorporating the math and science as well. Um, and we have all sorts of really fun hands-on plays and demonstrations and projects. And it's really creates memorable and uh, entertaining events for our students that, um, that, that, that really help them grasp the, the concepts of what we're trying to teach them and what they're needing to learn. So. I don't know if you're needing more information, Core Knowledge has a great website. And then um, I know Wildfire's website, we have a, a good video on it. You can see what it looks like in the classroom and the, the students and um, Greyhawk does as well. So I suggest everyone take a look and check those out. It really is a great program. Thanks, Ryan. Thanks, Ryan. Core Knowledge is a, a wonderful program that we have uh, in uh, nine of our schools and uh, really uh, a program that helps students really make connections uh, across a lot of content areas and create meaningful experiences for students that they carry on with them throughout their lives. So I'm really proud of uh, the work that uh, many of our schools are doing within Core Knowledge. 
Well, moving on to another uh, program that we have within our district is our International Baccalaureate Program embedded within uh, elementary, middle, and high schools uh, uh, within at least uh, one of those schools of each. And we've invited three of our principals here today, Marty, uh, Marta Maynard, uh, Paul Ferrero, and Melissa Malzahn, our elementary, middle, and high school principals to share some information about IB. So I'll let you take it away and feel free to let me know when you want me to advance the slides. Thank you, Dr. Corison. Hi, good evening, everybody. I'm Marta Maynard, principal of Quail Run, and the International Baccalaureate Program does offer rigorous, high-quality programs that are focused on developing the intellectual, personal, and social skills of students and uh, we have three programs. We have the primary years program at Quail Run Elementary. We have the middle years program at Vista Verde and then the diploma program at North Canyon. So um, next slide, please. So as you see there, you see the wording of, uh, of the International Baccalaureate Mission, which um, it's really to create a better world through education. We encourage students to be compassionate, lifelong learners who respect all cultures and become active members in their communities. Next slide, please. So the primary years program at Quail Run uh, is open to all students in kindergarten through sixth grade. Our IB coordinator is Diana Ruby and you see her uh, in the email there. Uh, we teach through inquiry. Students are actively involved in their own learning and they take responsibility for that learning. So we plan and implement instruction that is relevant, engaging, and challenging. We create IB units that are transdisciplinary uh, and uh, across all the grade levels. Next slide, please. And then the learner profile attributes are the character traits that we teach, model, and reinforce with students starting in kindergarten. They are the learning outcomes for all students based on our mission. And Mr. Ferraro will take it away with middle years. Good evening, everyone. I'm Paul Ferraro. I'm the Birdie Middle School. Um, with the middle years program, uh, we actually partner with North Canyon. It starts here at for grades seven and eight. And then our students go through ninth and 10th grade at North Canyon. Shown here is our typical schedule for um, our um, IB students. And actually at Vista Verde, we have IB campus-wide. So all of our students have the chance to or have the ability to experience the MYP um, curriculum. So our core classes usually include our English, math, science, and social studies, along with the language, um, French or Spanish. Um, they also have a chance to take something in the arts, PE, and then focus on a design component at Vista Verde that has to do with coding and technology and at North Canyon um, culinary and they're working on getting robotics there. Next slide, please. On the, one of the big focuses of the middle years program is the learning through action and uh, the community involvement. Um, as our students are getting older, um, we're asking them to you know, be global thinkers and working with their community and doing projects um, especially here at the middle school. And then when they get to their personal project in high school, that is something where they get to focus something they want to accomplish in their two years um, as a freshman and sophomore. And that is their um, personal project that they finish at that level. Um, the good thing about our middle years program is our coordinator, um, Mr. Ian Connell, is both the coordinator here at Vista Verde and at North Canyon. So it bridges nicely between both campuses. So if you have any questions, feel free to contact him anytime. All righty, I'm gonna introduce Ms. Melissa Malzahn, our principal from North Canyon to do the diploma program. Thank you, Mr. Ferrero. Uh, yes, my name is Melissa Molzon. I'm the proud principal of North Canyon High School. These are the final years for our IB students, which are students in 11th and 12th grade. Our coordinator is uh, Matt Case for the diploma program. Students need to complete the diploma program in order to earn an IB diploma. Once awarded, this opens many doors for scholarship opportunities. To receive the diploma, the students complete six IB exams in different subject areas, including the arts. Several of these exams also earn the students college credit. 
Along the way, the students do continue their community involvement within the DP program, completing their CAST hours, which stands for creativity, activity, and service. Part of this opportunity is completing 50 plus hours of community service, along with hours for participating in extracurricular activities. Yes, these students are very busy. Uh, these students also have the opportunity to complete an extended essay with the help of a mentor teacher. This is a 4,000 word research paper on a topic of their choice, but it is very helpful in their process in going to college. Through the diploma program, students leave high school better prepared for college and a well-rounded student with an extensive college resume. Next slide, please. Some of the benefits of the IB program are students are accepted at universities at a higher rate than non-IB students and earn four-year college degrees at a higher rate and at a faster time. IB students are well prepared for future employment because of the focus on rigorous academic study within a broad and balanced curriculum. Students are also better able to cope with demanding workloads, manage their time, and meet expectations placed on them due to this rigorous program that they do during high school. Um, one of the highlights for students is that it creates lifelong friendships, um, and that is usually their, one of their favorite parts of this program. IB students learn to see the beauty in diversity and different perspectives, as well as develop into inquiring, knowledgeable, and caring young people that help to create a better and more peaceful world through an intercultural understanding and respect. Next slide. And we threw this slide in there because I think this speaks for itself and it's the biggest selling point it's what alumni have to say about the program um, we still have students that come back uh, all the time and tell us it was like family ib struck the right balance of emphasizing academic rigor self-reflection i thrived as an academic performer in college uh, and beyond and they are comfortable in the profession and one of my favorites is i honestly wouldn't be the person i am today without having received an ib education so students will rave about that. So if you ever see an IB uh, alumni, just ask them about our programs. We all have um, websites that give more information. You can email any one of us if you have questions about uh, the IB programs that we offer at all of our schools. Thank you. And there's our flyer. <laughs> All right, uh, thank you all uh, for some information about the International Baccalaureate Program, a fantastic program that really pushes our students uh, academically in, in a way that um, is a very integrated approach. And so we really appreciate the extra efforts of our teachers and staff and coordinators of the IB program for all the work that they put into uh, really work with these uh, talented individuals. So speaking of talented individuals, we also have our North Valley Arts Academies, uh, a really signature program in our district. Uh, and here to talk about that is our Director of Fine, Al Fine Arts, Joel Taylor. Good evening, everyone, and, and thank you for this opportunity. Um, the North Valley Arts Academies, we're gonna go through a series of slides that I'm gonna highlight on and not read them to you. They can be found on the uh, school district main website under special programs or signature programs. The NVAA, North Valley Arts Academies, uh, incorporates three different schools. Um, Shea Middle School, uh, I'm sorry, I'm a little tired. Um, the elementary school next to it and, um, come on, uh, Shadow Mountain High School. Um, the Desert Cove. Uh, the North Valley um, offers a variety of, of the fine arts, dance, music, um, music technology. And we'll be talking about each of these as we go through. Starting in the fifth grade, students can specialize, and I wish that I could, there we go, uh, can specialize in, in different areas of the fine arts, and they can enter the program and apply to enter the programs at all levels. A question has come up about applications. Those are taken throughout, and depending on the program, uh, a simple application is needed and or an audition or portfolio. And we'll cover those individually as we go through the programs. Uh, the NVAA program culminates in a senior experience where students have the opportunity and it's required to intern with an arts organization. And we have some interns working with some of our schools in the uh, younger level um, arts programs as well. They must complete a capstone project and they can earn two seals um, with their diploma, one being the NVAA 
uh, seal, as well as the Arizona or, um, Arts Seal of Proficiency or Proficiency Arts Seal uh, to graduate with honors. Next slide, slide please. Um, sorry, folks, I need to get something to drink. Thank you. We have uh, the different unique programs that can be found in each of the areas. Visual arts, and that's um, drawing, painting, um, ceramics, theater, um, music that includes music theater and non-music theater. Dance in the middle school and high school. Music technology was also at Shea and uh, actually includes um, um, Desert Cove elementary students as well that visit Shea Middle School for those courses and has continued on in the high school. Recently, we're working, we're working with, uh, Des, uh, with the high school to redevelop um, a, a site there to expand the music technology program that is an ever-growing program that, that in, in, increases each year. Next slide, please. Uh, the NVA missions to foster creative and confident artists who are committed to and passionate about the power of the arts in society. Uh, next slide, please. The vision states to create a unique program within a school learning environment that focuses, uh, focuses on empowering young people to tell their own stories, develop their creative selves, and engage the world through the arts. Studies, and this is not in the slide, but studies show that students that are actively engaged in the arts and sports are more often present in school. Therefore, attendance is higher and greater opportunities to learn and do better on, on tests. Um, this is one of the benefits um, of the arts. One of the um, several of the areas that are, are special with the NVA program is prior to COVID, we would have professional artists visit in person throughout the year. Uh, now it's virtual, but we still continue with the uh, visual or professional visiting artist programs. We have partnerships with arts organizations all throughout the city, including professional theater organizations, several colleges and universities, Grand Canyon, PVCC, several others, Scottsdale Center for the Arts, The Rock down the street. We are actively engaged with a number of programs to provide the students with the maximum amount of internship possibilities, hands-on learning. Uh, and today we had um, a gentleman from Spot 127, local uh, TV or radio program, working with the music technology students at Shadow Mountain. Um, again, prior to COVID, we had field trips uh, scheduled regularly to related destination, destinations. Now we are working with those virtually. Next slide, thank you. Um, as I mentioned before, all areas, all areas of the arts, and this has been mentioned with um, different areas, career and technology, um, AVID, um, develop the critical thinking skills and enhance the communication skills. They um, further develop the ability to work individually and collaboratively with, with, collaboratively with people and increase creative problem solving skills, working with each other to put on the shows. Next, thank you. Performance and presentation skills. You can look at this slide is from the Adams family. Uh, leadership skills, perseverance, patience, dedication, confidence. Next slide, please. Uh, arts specialization, arts academy with all of the benefits includes an arts specialization with access to full public school learning folks. This includes these are programs within the three schools, Desert Cove, Shea, and Shadow Mountain. So these are fully integrated um, public school programming that include access to athletics, traditional school experience, and a combination of other programs as well. So the students in the NVA program are not isolated. They are included in other programs as well. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, again, as an overview with the senior experience, they are expected to take a portfolio class to help develop their portfolios uh, for the, um, especially for the visual arts and dance. And more and more colleges are requiring some type of portfolio when you are auditioning and more colleges are, are doing their auditions in, now virtually uh, to include the portfolio um, information. Internships are required in the NVA program. Again, as I mentioned earlier, these are varied. We uh, are working with a variety of organizations very creatively to give the students the experience, the hands-on experience on what it really means to work in a professional theater, dance, music, visual arts, and even educational settings. Capstone Project is expected to um, be proposed to their mentor teacher, approved, 
monitored and completed by their senior year. By the time they finish this program, they've developed a resume cover letter website that includes their portfolio, a body of work to be shown to either professional organizations and or colleges and universities uh, in the admission process. Elevator speech, we, I, I, I'm sure that we all know what that is, the one to three minute speech that you're giving in the elevator time to go up three, fly, uh, three floors. Uh, interview and self-promotion skills, to be able to talk with yourself and promote your product. Next slide, please. Graduation with honors includes NVA Honors Graduation Stole, the NVAA Honors Diploma Seal, and the AZ Arts Proficiency Diploma Seal. Um, that incidentally, folks, one of our uh, visual arts students from Pinnacle High School uh, did the design for the Arizona Arts Proficiency Seal. So the work that you see on that seal comes from our district. Next slide, please. The application process is outlined in this section. Um, Again, this can be found in the specialty programs, the signature programs on the main webpage with the online process through the pvschools.net slash NVAA. And these are for each of the additional program, uh, signature programs, the dance, visual arts, theater, music, technology, et cetera. Next slide, please. Teresa, Dr. Teresa Menarsic is the new NVAA coordinator. Uh, she is half-time in that position and half-time teaching. She can be reached at this, and, and she is wonderful at, act, at answering questions and working with parents and reaching out to other organizations. She is uh, thrilled to answer questions, set up tours, uh, work with applications. Of course, you can send information to my office. I'm happy to assist in any way possible. I will be working as much as possible with Dr. Menarsic on site uh, with more hands-on information. Next slide, please. And I think that's the end of your slides, Joel. What I would like to add real quick, and a slide that, that did not get a chance to be put in there, was the Suzuki Violin Program at, I apologize, I have vacuuming going on outside my door, at Desert Shadows Elementary School, taught by uh, Laura Sijud. Uh, this is, uh, these are violin lessons that are incorporated in pre-K through third, uh, with an option, an opportunity, for students in grades four through six to take these courses as well. This is a unique program that was developed by uh, Dr. Suzuki, who, I'm not sure if you can hear the vacuum cleaner, I'm trying to talk a little louder, um, uh, that learned to present the information in such a way that younger students can pick these skills up much easily and much faster. This is a unique program. Again, the application process and, and information process is handled more directly through the elementary school. Again, we are thrilled to assist in any way poss possible through this office as well. Thank you folks for sharing your time and allowing us to share information with you. Great, thank you so much, uh, Joel. So uh, here to talk about our special education program and the continuing continue, uh, continuum of services that we offer uh, to differentiate the needs of, of all of our students is Linda Taylor, our Director of Special Education. Hi, everybody. Good afternoon. I know it feels like evening because it's getting dark. Um, Dr. Corson told me I had five minutes, so you're getting one slide. Uh, I had the pleasure of working with a group of stakeholders uh, summer and fall of 2019. Some of you are here with us tonight. Thank you. Um, and we were looking at our district's uh, vision for inclusion. We always want our students to be in the general education uh, classroom as much as possible to have access to the general education curriculum and their peers. So you'll see that statement there that kind of reflects what we came up with as a committee and we did some great work. Um, but inclusion is not always enough for some of our students. So starting with uh, the, the blue at the bottom, these are our self-contained programs. Um, and please note that we don't have any pure programs. Many of our programs are kind of a cross-categorical uh, type of a program because we place our students where their needs can best be met, not just based on a disability or a label. So we'll start with our, pre our preschool. Uh, students with unique needs, we've got our Sun Kids Preschool. Our big main site is at the James P. Lee Center, um, but we also have about 10 satellite sites at some of our elementary campuses. Resources at every site. Uh, resources are, are program for students who have a specific learning disability and sometimes other health impairments. Um, sometimes those programs are push in and the teacher pushes into the general education classroom. Sometimes they are pull out 
and the students go to the resource classroom if they need content replacement. Um, communication development, our CD program, that is for students who have significant language impairments and they cannot access the general education curriculum. So they are taught in a specific way that really tackles those speech needs. That's a lot of time also with the speech and language pathologist working in conjunction with the teacher. Um, the next group we have are learning for independence groups. We have our LFI one, and then we have LFI two, three. One is for our students with a mild cognitive impairment, and then two, three are for our students that are, who are more significantly impaired. Um, those students typically are in self-contained programs, but again, we want them included as much as possible. They go to specials, they have lunch, they have recess, and when possible, they go to general education classrooms. Um, the next model that we have is our structured teaching model. Um, this is kind of unique to PD, and I'm really quite proud of our efforts. Um, we have it at uh, all levels, elementary, middle, and high, and we have an academic level for these students, and often our academic kids are in gen ed. We also have a functional level, and those are kids who are a little bit more impacted by their autism. And so those kids spend a little bit more time typically in their structured classroom, but they also have specials and lunch and recess with their typical peers. Um, next, we have our choices affect behavior success, which we lovingly call CABS. Um, our kiddos there have an emotional disability, and the program that we use or we utilize is the Boys Town model, uh, Father Flanagan's Boys Town model out of uh, Omaha, Nebraska. And we've been using that for years. Uh, Roadrunner is our self-contained site for CABS, but we have CABS also at elementary, middle, and high school level. Um, and the big focus is working on their social and emotional growth and having these students learn the appropriate skills to be successful in general education. Um, next, we have learning for academic success. Students in this program typically have uh, significant learning disabilities that prevent them from accessing a general education curriculum. So they have specially designed instruction to really meet their specific needs. Um, next, we have Twice Exceptional. Uh, that is a very limited program, and we are the only district that currently offers that. Uh, those are students who have a gifted uh, identification as well as an area of exceptionality, which would qualify them for special education. Um, right now, unfortunately, our elementary uh, Twice Exceptional program is on hold. We're looking for a new teacher, but we do still have the Twice Exceptional program at our middle school level. And then those students often, much like Dr. Bruya said, they go off and find their area of interest for high school, whether that would be um, STEM or IB or things of that nature. Um, last but not least, we have our transition program. We call that Pathways, and that's for our students who between the ages of 18 and 22 aren't quite ready for the world yet. They, they need a little bit more. Um, they, they might need some independence, some living skills. They may need some um, preparation for what the future is going to look like. They may need some job skills and job coaching. And so that's what we work on with those students uh, between 18 and 22. Um, and that includes Project Search, with De which Deb uh, referenced earlier. Uh, that's our collaboration, that last piece there, with Mayo Clinic. It's an unpaid internship, and our students are doing ro rotations through departments that are really, truly amazing. Um, you know, we kind of... I think maybe underestimated what our students would be doing, but when we got our parent information night and we saw human resources, we saw um, business services, we saw pharmacy and um, physical therapy, it was really exciting to know that they're putting no limits on our kids and we don't wanna do that either. So um, that's my quick spiel about everything that we have going on in special education in Paradise Valley. Thank you for your time tonight. All right, and last but not least is Phil Howardell to talk about CREST program uh, housed at Paradise Valley High School. Phil? Well, hello, everyone. My name is Phil Howardell. I'm the CREST program coordinator and the district STEM coordinator. So CREST is the Center for Research and Engineering Science and Technology. We're essentially a CTE STEM program at Paradise Valley High School. And, and really what we're about is we're a four-year program where we apply at rigorous academic content in relevant and meaningful ways. Our students always work in collaborative groups and students apply and study in one of three strands, engineering, bioscience, and computer science. Next slide, please. So in the end, CREST is an attempt to solve the problem. Where will the next generation of scientists, engineers, and technical leaders come from? And notice that leaders is bolded. 
Um, we are training our students to be leaders in whatever area that they're working in. Um, and I think that's a very important part of what we do every day in the program. Uh, next slide. So how do we do this? Well, we're a problem-based learning curriculum. So as typical with a lot of courses, students gain a lot of content. Teach, teachers lecture, students read, um, they, they get all this content, this high level content, but what makes us kind of different is we very quickly move to the application stage. So students may have some problem to solve or they'll come up with one, they do background research, they document extensively, and then they're involved with designing or completing some kind of a relevant experiment or a project. And they may be running the project, they may be building the prototype in one of our shops. Next slide, please. Um, and of course, if we're going to be solving problems, we have to test solution, we calculate and analyze the results. So you can see so far that in a STEM program, our students are using their science, their math, they're certainly using their, uh, their English language skills. And the next thing our kids do is they present their findings generally in a public forum, just like um, STEM students in college do. They, we have our, our, our poster presentations, the public comes in and our kids are presenting their work to their parents and, and to the public. As always, our students work in collaborative groups and all the while that they're doing this, they're developing employability skills like leadership and teamwork and collaboration and communication and cooperation. And they're learning to write resumes and cover letters and interviewing. Um, there's a lot of work-based learning that's going on in our program. Next slide, please. So what's Crest Life like? Well, we are an honors and AP program. So our kids work hard. They work late nights, they attend conferences on the weekends. Um, all of our students complete a 200 hour internship their senior year. They're involved with service learning. They attend local state and national competitions. Um, we've actually medaled at national competitions and have at least one gold medal that I know of. And then on so on top of all that they do all the other stuff that high school students do like play sports or go to games. They are in student government. The, a lot of our students are in band, orchestra, and drama. So everything you can do at, a, uh, at one of our high schools, our students, our Crest students are involved in as well. Next slide, please. So as I kind of kind of get down to the end, who are we looking for? What, what makes for a successful student? Well, first of all, the biggest thing is we're looking for students with a passion for STEM. I mean, if, you, if your student is more interested in the arts, then there's the North Valley Arts Academy. And if it is um, the humanities, then it may be DAPS or maybe the IB program. But if your student is passionate about STEM, Crest is the place to come. Um, we're looking for students who thrive working in groups because that's how we operate. Students with a growth mindset tend to be very successful, willing to try new things, willing to fail because that's got nothing to do with grades learn from your mistakes and then just try it again next slide please we're looking for students who are willing to put in the time and effort and that i could just stop right there if a student is willing to do the extra work it takes to be successful in a high level program that's the kind of students that can be successful for us we're looking for students who wish to become professionals and ready to succeed at the next level, no matter what it is, whether it's going to college, work, the military, those are the kind of students that are, are dedicated enough to do the kind of work we do. And finally, we're looking for students who wanna make a change in the world, a positive change. And at this point, when I'm talking to kids, I say, if this is you, next slide, please, then apply to the CREST program. Um, so everything you need to know about the CREST program is on our website and uh, you can get there from the old vanity um, site um, URLs pvschools.net forward slash CREST. There is an application. Um, if your student is a PV school student, I can pull their grades. Um, there is a recommendation form. I'm sure this is much like the other programs. Um, but we have this very cool online interview. It's the same program that the district uses to hire um, new teachers. And so, um, so the students have to have to do this, this interview and answer these questions. And it's, 
it's lots of fun for us to uh, to review those. And again, everything you need to know about the program is on the Crest website. Full length presentations, tours of our program, programs of study, you know, the kind of courses you would take while you're here, um, descriptions of what engineering, bioscience, computer science are all about. And the last slide, please. Thank you. So one of the things that um, I wanted to talk about is, all right, let's say you don't have a child who's in eighth grade. How can I get ready for Crest? Well, since we are a STEM program, um, we ask families to maximize your math and science, to really work on excelling in that, because that is the key to any STEM profession. But also develop, your, develop yourself as a, as, a, as a writer, to be able to read critically and be able to write and express yourself, very important. Obviously, good grades are very important, what we're going to look for. So fifth, sixth, seventh grade is the time to get pretty serious about this kind of work. You, we, you know, get used to working in teams, work with, you know, get involved with as many projects as you can. And then if you can attend any STEM or STEAM camp like at ASU or do some activities, some after school stuff, we have a couple of middle schools that have great, we've kind of talked about that some of them today have great electives in middle school. And so these are the things that kids who are coming up and if they're interested in STEM, they can do to, to, to get ready for our program. And do I have one more slide? Um, no, that, that's it. And so um, that that's what I have. If you have any, if you have any questions for me, my email address is plastered all over the uh, the Crest website. Thank you. Well, thanks, Phil. I appreciate that. I would also be remiss if I didn't uh, share with the group, uh, you know, one of our other programs that we're particularly proud of, and that's our dual language immersion program. You know, we have two programs, one in Spanish and one in Mandarin. And our Spanish program is held at Sandpiper, Sunrise, and uh, Horizon High School, a small and mighty uh, little cohort uh, attending Horizon High School in the first year of high school, Spanish immersion. And we have also our Mandarin immersion dual language program at Whispering Winds and currently at Sunrise Middle School. So we're excited by this program. You know, this is a phenomenal program for students to not only learn a, uh, an additional language, but there's so much research out there to, to show that students that learn a second language also uh, uh, progress academically at faster rates than other students. And there's something about that cognitive development about engaging in another language that really promotes uh, academic and uh, cognitive development of students. And so that's a fantastic program that we have going on in our schools as well. That concludes our uh, presentation this evening of just a snapshot of some of the programs. There are many more programs that are uh, out in our schools and we would encourage you to uh, check out uh, any of those uh, programs on individual school websites. And of course, if you've got questions about any of tonight's programs, feel free to reach out to the directors or leads or principals of those programs. And I know that they'd be happy to answer your questions. With that, I'll turn it back over to Julie or Melissa to uh, close off uh, this portion. Well, I'm gonna ask real quickly if anyone has any questions, we still have about 35 people on the presentation. So thank you very much for hanging in there, folks. I know it's been a late evening, uh, but if there are any questions, we still do have a lot of folks available to answer them. And if not, uh, please go to our YouTube channel or our Facebook page. Uh, a lot of these programs have done videos and we are adding more regularly. So even Crest has uh, a presentation on there and we look forward to getting a few more loaded in the next uh, few weeks. Um, I'm not seeing any questions come up in the chat. Julie, did you have any questions to ask? There was a question. Oh, there's one. Yeah, do you see that? Yeah, one just popped up. What is the key difference between AVID and IB? Um, and then I'll ask the next one after that. So Dr. Corson, do you know who would like to answer that? 
Uh, well, I can take Looks a like stab at, at that. And then if Melissa uh, or uh, either of our Melissa Ganis or Melissa Malzahn want to jump in, they certainly can. Sure. Our International Baccalaureate uh, program is really intended for uh, kind of honors track students that are uh, going to be moving on to competitive colleges and universities. Uh, and so that is a program that is really uh, geared uh, to students that are on a, a college and career pathway track. Our AVID um, uh, program is really there to provide uh, some additional assistance to students who may not have ordinarily thought of college as a, as a pathway for them, but yet who have the potential. And with some additional intervention and skills, we believe that we can uh, get them there. Um, Melissa Ganis or Melissa Malzahn, anything you would add to that? Sure, I, I will add to that. Uh, Melissa Ganis, hello everybody. So I worked at North Cannon before I became the AVID district coordinator. So I'm very familiar with both AVID and IB and um, how they kind of work together. There are a lot of similarities. There's a focus on leadership and community service and also college and career readiness. Um, one of the key differences is in AVID, you get to choose the honors courses you take. So you get to choose AP or dual enrollment, or you can take IB courses as well. So there's a little bit more flexibility in the coursework choices and what you may want to specialize in. IB is a full honors program. And in AVID, we've had kids take full honors courses, coursework the whole time and end up with 4.5 GPAs. Um, so there's just a little bit of a different focus with that. Um, AVID, you have the elective class, which gives the support in that rigorous coursework and focuses on a lot of those skills that students have and retain with them to be more successful in college and career. Um, just like with IB, there's lots of scholarship opportunities just for AVID students and um, they all go to college, oftentimes are going to the same universities and applying to the same universities. There's that family feel in both of them. So I'd say one of the biggest differences is the choice in coursework and how you would like your high school career to look. Great, great combination. Melissa Mulzoon, are you still on? Did you wanna add anything? I can't tell if she's still here. Uh, actually, I, I don't believe she is. I was speaking I for both of us. Off. Yeah. <laughs> That's fine, not a problem. Yeah. Um, Julie, you wanna go ahead and ask those uh, that follow-up question. There's one now and then the one earlier, you can ask them together. Okay, uh, two questions came up uh, regarding the Mandarin Immersion Program. One asks, where does Mandarin Immersion continue in high school? And the second question is, what is happening to these programs, specifically Mandarin Immersion during COVID? Well, uh, to take the second question, you know, the both the Spanish and Mandarin immersion continues, uh, whether students are uh, taking it through the PV Connect or PV in person, where we're not able to uh, replicate the same dual language uh, program immersion is within the PV online system. But those students who continue to uh, be in person or move to PB Connect beginning next week will continue to receive uh, immersion instruction, whether they're on the Spanish or Mandarin side. And Horizon High School, which is our high school designated for Spanish immersion, is also the same high school that will be designated to receive our Mandarin immersion students too. And we're going to be working over this next year or so to, um, to develop that Mandarin high school immersion program uh, and looking at how our high school Spanish immersion program is doing to see whether or not there are lessons that we can learn from that uh, to either replicate or make changes. Great information there. Uh, folks, we've kept you on for quite a while. It's almost six o'clock. We really appreciate um, your participation in this evening's presentation. I did post a link to the uh, PVUPC YouTube account. If you have not uh, joined that, we ask that you go ahead and, and uh, like that account and that way you'll be able to get back to it and see all of our videos. We've moved over videos from the past two years. So a lot of our gifted presentations, our evening presentations we've done for several years have been added to that YouTube site. Um, and we are adding more presentations working with all of our uh, fine educators here across the district. So thank you for helping us do that as, we, uh, as we're in this, this uh, 
time of being online and Zooming, as you will, uh, or whether it's through web, web uh, events on uh, the district site or via Zoom or Google Classroom. So thank you very much. Julie, anything else? I'll let you close this one out. Um, no, I just want to thank all of our wonderful presenters. You were very prepared, stuck to the timeline, answered everything that we asked you to answer. So thank you very much. And thank you to everyone who stayed on this whole time. Uh, like Melissa said, there's another CD, uh, another program coming up that you can catch on Monday. You can go to our YouTube page and we will be putting together a summary of a lot of this information uh, that we will put out in the next newsletter, if not sooner, so that you can uh, have one place to go to uh, with some of our notes that you can use in addition to your own. And is there anything else you want to add, Jessica? All right, then we will sign off and say thank you to all of you. And we look forward to seeing you online and on our Facebook page and wherever else we might see you around town. Everyone, please stay safe and healthy and uh, do your best to stay positive. And we're going to get through this. And we appreciate all your support. Thanks.